So today I arrived in a town called Essen, Germany. Every year in Essen there's a show called the Techno Classica. It's a classic car show, but with several themes attached to it. You'll have a lot of new manufacturers there showing the history of their cars. You'll probably see like Porsche, Mercedes, Audi, all showing the old cars and how their companies actually started, which is pretty neat. You'll see car clubs there, uh, people selling parts, used parts, new parts, and uh, car dealers selling all sorts of oddball exotics that you'll never really see in the States. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity for me to kind of come over here and show you guys some of the cars that you might never see in your life. Because the last time I was here was probably about six or seven years ago. And each year they bring out stuff that you've never seen. And it could be like one of five cars or you know something like that. So let's go check this out. I'm gonna try to put this video together, make it move quicker, and hopefully enjoy it and give it a thumbs up. A straight, a straight six engine for Honda. Okay, here's an original speedster. Unmess with it. It's like just totally original. thing is you don't see stuff like this in the states at all I mean but look at look at the controls in there look at that look at these controls okay so here's something I've never seen before this is a 67 Toyota 2000 GT look at this thing it's a These guys are with vintage tires. We are. Yes. So you make vintage tires for all sorts of different cars? Yes, we do, yeah. Uh-huh. Where are you guys at? We're from the UK. From the UK? Yeah. We're about to the UK. Beerley. Where? Beerley. Well, really? the south coast. Down near so Southampton. Tell me about, like, say, the white wall, stuff like this. What kind of cars? Anything? Like, Anything motorcycles? Like 15, I mean, this would go, yeah, probably would go on a motorcycle if, mm. you, if you dare put a car tire on a motorcycle. Right, but it's for like a, a car tire for... Yeah, it's a Volkswagen Beetle primarily. Okay. Uh, MGT series, the TD is it, if it's a 15. Um, Opel Capitan will go on there as well. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. So how do you do the, how do you do the wheels? <laughs> so fine. How do I... Do the wheels? You use a very thin brush? To yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. I have really, uh, really thin, really thin brushes. I have, uh, like this wow. one. It's like a triple zero or something. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's four times zero. <laughs> <laughs> four zero. So do yeah, that. Yeah, four zero. It's a four zero brush just to do the, the wires and the wire wheels. Okay. Yeah, it's really yeah. small. The reflection and everything is amazing. Yeah. One painting is about 250 hours. Really? Yeah, it's insane. You have to be crazy. So a lot of people don't realize that Lamborghini actually made tractors. Check some of these tractors out. ist eine der Kerndevisen des Ich 
Yeah. You know what it is? Yeah. Is it a get track? Yeah, like I bought one from. But was this a get track like uh, from some other car, and they make it fit? Yes, yes. You yes, pick yes. from a BMW or something exactly, like that. Exactly, exactly. Right, like a 265 yes. or a 325 yes, yes. or. You know this this part here. Because mm -hmm. I see this adapter here that you make for the shift to yes, move it yes. back. So this is an adapter. This is for the the, the belt for the the speedometer cable. Yes, mm -hmm. and this this thing here, yes, is that a complete from the modern car. Yes, right. yes. yes. Got it. But the rest here, yes, is made is tailor made for for the for the car, especially right. made for so the car. So you make the bell housing, the adapter yes. housing, you everything. everything. You yes. also get a new shorter uh, drive shaft. Yes. Right, sure. Everything is yes. included. Everything it's is really, included. It's really good. Mm. It is. And you have it in what kind of car? I have in a Pagoda. You have it in a Pagoda. Yeah. Wow. I haven't started up yet, but, <laughs> I, but I put it together. Right. In next month or next right. next two months, I will. We have many many customers sold it to these mm -hmm. gearboxes. Mm -hmm. They are all satisfied. Yeah. All. Mm. Yep. It's a nice, it's a nice conversion. Yeah. Never having so, seen it. It's cool. But like, it's it's cool because look at the steering wheel. It's yeah. like a plane, you know. Like this company made planes, but yet <laughs> and have the whole thing. It looks like like you think this should be a machine gun turret. Yeah. On this thing. <laughs> that it's wild like this is a nice touch just we'll just take this out and go picnicking with it you know what i mean that's crazy Thirty-five euros. Thirty-five thousand euros. Thirty-five thousand euros with the conversion was about 45. look just to go skiing that's cool So if you want to drive a Trojan, there you go. Look at this Trojan. So if these belts broke, you just wipe out your plan. I'm just fascinated that this rubber thing here, it must zip tied, it must come down here. And I was growing up, Paul. Mm -hmm. It's got Falcon kind of thing in the yeah, front. 64, 65. 64, 65 Falcon. But it's like the roof is bigger, it's higher, but the body is smaller. It's like a German Ford RS, which is a combination of like a, a Falcon and a, a, a Cyclone almost, but a little bit smaller, a little bit higher, but it is a Ford that was manufactured in Germany. Okay, so I'm at Techno Classica in Essen, Germany, and been walking around for a while, and I landed in what I call the wine and cheese section of the show. I get all sorts of high-end Ferraris and Dinos over here. Look at them. I mean, you're talking about cars that are probably worth over a million dollars a pop. This, this is classic, this is pure classic Silver Dino Ferrari. I love these cars. So these guys are repurposing aircraft parts into art and furniture. Look at his wing here. Leather. Is 
was only yesterday. He's coming again today. I was telling you about you, but it's not a candy for bad one. No, no, he's got many points and he's always travelling and he's got a gold card and he's he said that he booked uh, Pigmy and Economy on Pigmy and Economy on the way out and he got it that There it is. The real car in person at Essen. I guess if you want a high-end slicing machine restored, this is the company you go to. I'm trying to figure this out. It looks beautiful work, beautiful work. They love their meats. Mercedes happens to have one of the largest displays here at this show. It's massive and apparently they actually sell restored cars now over here or are selling parts to restore Mercedes cars. I'm going to find out about it. Yes. Got it. So these, I just didn't know these are all the clubs yeah. from Germany. Is, yeah. Is that what that is? There, there are 20 clubs approved from Mercedes-Benz. Oh, they're approved? Yeah, yeah. Approved. So Only the approved clubs you will find here. There are other clubs and forums etc. But they don't have the right to use the star logo. Okay. Yeah. Do they get, does Mercedes get involved in making old parts for the cars too? Uh, partly. Uh, no, no. It's, uh, I, would, I would say, uh, if, you, if you look at the 20 clubs there, you will have 19 clubs which are uh, for, for social purposes. Right. To travel around, to have dinner with the ladies, etc. Okay. Yeah. And there's one club for the guys with the dirty fingernails. Uh, like me. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, me. yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is <laughs> the VDH club. And, and, and we have, we have uh, some special arrangement with Mercedes-Benz Classic. We part-time cooperate. Uh, may, may I introduce one example? Uh, to uh, The rear bumpers for the W111 Coupe, mm -hmm. coupe, coupe and Cabrio. Uh, we ordered, we, we made a, 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 a big remanufacturing to get new ones after having 15 or 20 years of having nothing. So no, it's we, 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 we pulled the old tools out and gave them to a Chinese workshop to press new metal and to do the chrome jobs, etc. It was very, very costly. In this uh, thing we invested around of 900,000 euros to wow. get around one and a half thousand new bumpers and then when the uncle Mercedes saw that this was running well they said oh we double the figures and we take the half yeah. and so being a club member of the VDH you could get the rear bumper for 800 euros and if you are a customer of Mercedes-Benz Classic you can also get a new rear bumper for 2,800 euros. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's the truth. So Mercedes-Benz Classic sells some, the some, some other examples. If I am the stock manager of Mercedes-Benz Classic and I have 200 of the, the, the left chrome mirrors too much and I would like to decrease my stock I could either run an auction 
to, to, to tell the whole world there are 200 mirrors and then there will come two or three dealers. They fetch all the whole things and, and, and then give it to eBay at, at five times the prices. Or if they are clever, they talk with us, with our stock managers, and we take the mirrors and we sell it to our membership. Amazing. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so there, there, there is often some organization, Mercedes-Benz invites the club man managers to have speeches, to arrange fairs like this, etc. And to talk about the strategy, the purposes of supporting clubs, and we as a club support the Mercedes also. So you, you see me working on a Mercedes-Benz fair in a Mercedes-Benz paid hall, I get no money. I do it just for fun because it is fun to talk yeah, with international mm -hmm. people etc. Yeah. So it is a, a double win, win-win situation. It seems like a lot of the, the German companies are supporting restorations for cars we yeah. see now. Yeah. And in the United States that doesn't happen. The car companies couldn't care less about what yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. But it's nice to see that they're actually yeah. keeping the heritage going correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? They're still finding rear Mercedes around Europe in different places. Barn yeah. finds and stuff. Yeah, barn finds we, we have, of course. Uh, often it is a good idea to go to Sweden because the Swedish people have a weather in the winter time which is so cold that it is absolutely useless to use salt. And salt produces corrosion, so the Swedish people drive cars in winter time without salt. Yeah. So the bodywork is too, right? yeah. yeah, Finland, Norway, Sweden. Yeah. So you you can do do barn finds in Norway and, and Sweden and Finland, and and get Finally. the cars for uh, quite normal prices with a better bodywork, yeah. like the cars coming from California yeah. or from other dry climates. Yeah. Interesting. What's really cool about that guy with the the clubs and how these clubs are working are cooperative with uh, Mercedes so they can get Mercedes to make parts and they buy the parts at a discount. It'd be really great if some US manufacturers would do the same thing. But that's a pretty cool start in the restoration business. Yeah. Porsche, Volvo uh, and Mercedes are both doing that now where they're doing these cooperatives where they'll actually make the parts from the old tooling for you now. So I'm in hall number 11, and this particular hall has to do with basically classic car dealers that have on display the cars that they're selling. And it's kind of interesting because actually in the US, I never see this many classic car dealers in one location, and the incredible amount of very unique and beautifully restored cars. Upstairs at the convention center, there's a lot of different car clubs that could be a Volkswagen Club, a GTI Club, a Capri Club. They kind of hang out here with all their friends and have parties and have a lot of weird displays like this one over here. I don't quite know what the theme is. The wedding, the toilet paper wedding cake. So for example, let's go look over here. We got a Audi Club with some kind of old Audis. Look at these things, they're amazing. Again, stuff you don't see in the States. Beautiful, beautiful cars, actually. Amazing amount of restoration uh, companies here, and the quality is just through the roof. The paint jobs, the chrome, everything. I've never seen anything like this before. These club displays are amazing here. I love them. Like they get the, the carpet all dug up over here, and the little pedal car, flowers. This area over here is an area where people actually just display their own cars, and they kind of do these artistic little displays rather than just having the car out there. Kind of like, kind of like this beach theme over here. The raft, the this is the water, the little crab over there, and the fishing lure, and the raft. It's 
like a camping theme. Look at this one here. So it was really quite a huge display actually for one vehicle that they put here. It's like a themed horse kind of farming thing with the saddles and horses and stables, I guess. Very curious about this one. I, I'm just curious. I've never been to a show like this. This is an amazing show. Okay. And is this uh, your... Hang on. Um, I translate. Um, er findet es ganz toll. Ja. Yeah. noch nie auf so einer Show. Das ist äh, Wahnsinn, was er hier sieht. Okay. Uh -huh. And so, is this just a display for your own car? Um, no, it's not a display for our own cars. It's a display for a club. A club. It's a club it's display. It's a club, yeah. This, all these uh, cars you see here is a, is a club presentation. Right. They do it because I've never seen the, the clubs, they put such great work into the yeah. art. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, is there a reason why this is a themed horse stable um, type thing? Or? This year, no, guys, what's going on in the club and so on? This year, the whole class from uh, Volkswagen um, decided to make a, um, Bond. a, a, a theme um, together. Okay, Usually that's how it is. Usually we make it for, to our own. But the dressing, this year, it's yeah, this beautiful. Year that, uh, oh, no, the sign is where, uh, uh, we are uh, in a village. Mm -hmm. The village uh, is uh, called Wolfsdorf. Okay. Wolfs, uh, Wolfsburg, ne? okay. Wolfsdorf. And that's why we have, if you've seen, um, the signs, you know, the, the, the license places. Okay, right, okay. Yeah. Got it. I'll go over there and look. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Oh, look at this camp. It's great. Look at this. East German Trabant. East German what? Trabant. Two strong. There's a guy who's got one of these in Chicago for and it's got Trabby as a not license. I know that girl. <laughs> she looks familiar. So we got a Bentley in the restoration process, and it has a uh, rear, it looks like almost like a quick change rear with both half shafts bolted to the middle section. Coming over on this way here, look at this transmission with the side pan on it. Homemade headers, and they redid this whole body in aluminum. So look at this old Bentley restored over here, and look at the raw aluminum work in the body that they're doing. Look at this Porsche engine. Isn't that beautiful? And this VW bus is actually outfitted with all later running gear. Disc brakes and upgraded suspensions. From the Czech Republic, racing Skodas. So I'm looking at some old Audi product, which is actually called the Auto Union back then. And this is an electric vehicle. Check this one out. So this is actually a Audi, well pre-Audi, it was called Auto Union back then. And this is an electric vehicle. And it was actually called a DKW Electro, 1956. I love these cars. Uh, 
they come with, they kind of have that like 55 Chevy look uh, these particular cars there's a few variations of the Fasol Vegas around I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly but I love the lights on them these particular lights are very unique to this car the way they're double stacked but it kind of reminds me of something like the US there's a lot of kind of uh, styling that was done from US kind of design so you'll this is a 57 so it's very similar to like what a 57 Chevy 55 Chevy would look like and then you got the cool little scoops here that were from let's say maybe like the Corvettes and things like that that they put in place but the back line over here is very similar to 55 Chevy including the way they did the back over here Probably one of my favorites. There's a lot of them at this show. Here's another. If you ever remember the Miura S Lamborghini, this was the car that got crushed in the first version of the Italian Job movie. Nico McBrain is one of my favorite drummers and also a fellow Floridian and he happens to have a very cool XJ6. He has a couple of XJ6. He has a black XJ6 that I've actually done some work on with my friends at Jaguar Doctor. But this is an amazing XJ6 that he restored uh, with a metallic purple paint job and a uh, red leather interior. It's a kind of cool combination. I guess those Iron Maiden dollars paid off. XJ220s, only a few I believe are bought into the States, it's a very rare car, but as typical of most of the manufacturers here, such as Jaguar, Mercedes, and Porsche, there's a big emphasis on classic cars and vintage cars at their booths, more so than you would see, let's say, at Ford at SEMA. If you go to the SEMA show, you might see an old Mustang or two, but you won't see the whole heritage. Most of these manufacturers at this show will show you their complete line of all their cars and including sometimes the tooling that they use to make their own cars. If you want the ultimate in leather, this is the place to find some very cool vendors. So the lady told me that these particular jackets, of course they're all handmade, but they actually stamp old coins and machine the coins to make buttons out of them. It's beautiful work. Look at the stitching in the work. So if you've got 4,000 euros to spend on a jacket, which is about a little bit over 5,000 US, I guess, go for it. So here's something very interesting. Because I know Corvettes pretty well, and I'm looking at the front end of this car, and you've got one wheel straight and one wheel turned in quite a bit, I look underneath the car, and the frame is completely wasted. It's like smashed up in one side. It's like they never, and with globs are weld all over it. Uh, if you were to do a car like this correctly, in the state you would just put a new frame on it. You wouldn't try to like repair the frame. And the frame is so poorly repaired on this car that it's atrocious. So they did this kind of great paint job on it. The body looks pretty good on it. The seams line up really well, but the frame is toast. And it's very interesting because it doesn't take much work to put a new frame on these cars.
So what we're looking at is a 1937 Skoda. It's from the Czech Republic. But what I wanted to show you that this is not a torque tube drive shaft because the torque tube normally the actual tube itself bolts to the engine's transmission or the the rear axle. This center section, the drive shaft runs through it and it becomes kind of like a structural part of the frame. Because on these cars, the outside was all wood. See? And so the frame ran across and tied into the wood. And the center section here was actually like the spine of the car, so to speak. So the tube, kind of an interesting idea. So the actual tube encased the drive shaft. You can see, look, it was pop riveted in over there, big rivets on both sides, bolted to the rear axle over there, bolted to the frame over here. And this created a nice rigid structure for the frame and for the car to stay on, running on a nice solid tube. Pretty interesting design. Combination of wood and steel, 1937. Here's a very interesting cutaway of a 911 coupe. And there we get the cutaway to diff, look at that. You see, this whole body was stripped down, and you could see they probably had glassed over the whole thing, and you could see how rough the workmanship was underneath it. They just basically filled it in, hit it with a hammer, and just glipped it up with some Bondo. And now the whole part is going to be stripped. Look at all the patchwork they did on this that they discovered once they stripped the car. Now, this is the lead over here. This is lead over here on this section over here. Porsche will make all new parts for this? This is Porsche Center. Right. This is Porsche Center Niederrhein mm -hmm. makes a restoration. So, this, the, this so they'll put a whole new panel in here? Yes. And repair the body and make it all one piece again and yes. correct. Because yeah, you can see these were all rust repairs then. Look at this rust over here. Look at that. So they made these patch panels. Yes. So rough the car too. So yes. rough. Wow. And they're going to replace all this stuff with factory parts again. Look over here. Look at this. They just tacked these in here even. And they probably just bounded the whole thing over. As you work your way down the 12 or 13 exhibition halls, I forget actually how many halls there are. When you get down to halls one and two, this is where they kind of have the swap meet section where people selling parts, used parts, new parts. Uh, this is really what I like a lot about this show. It's pretty interesting. For example, you got a guy here who restores all these carburetors. That's pretty strange looking. You've got still some guys that are selling collector cars, but for the most part, but for the most part, this is where you can go out and get the good stuff for your own shop and garage, like lifts, shop manuals, all sorts of cool stuff. These recycle bins are a work of art, and which always notice that people actually put things in the right place here, and there's never garbage on the floor. They actually pick up their garbage here and keep the place very clean. fuel tank is on this car. So again, here's some interesting uh, American influence. This is a Fiat 
that looks like a Studebaker. Uh, the year of this car is 1965. Now look at the roof line of this and the back end. Looks like a Studebaker. Fiat. So here you got a 73 455 Trans Am, it says with complete history. The car looks really clean actually, surprisingly. Um, seems to be correct in every way at all. It's quite amazing, but they want 53,000 euros for the 73 Trans Am. 53,000 euros times that by 1.25, that's what it is in US dollars. I had three of these, kills me. They want 65,000 euros for this Jensen Interceptor. A lot of you guys don't know what a Jensen Interceptor is. It actually had a 440 Mopar engine in it. So it had this kind of tiny car with a 440 in it. It's a pretty potent car. It's a Jensen. With the 8-track tape player, the must. Sounds important, but I couldn't quite make it out. So this is 19, but this is from this is from the 1940s, and so in the 1940s they made old aircraft parts into luggage. That was a thing, or like did people travel like that, or that's just what they did. That's what they did. Before I mentioned it was all these kind of theme displays, but what I never really got was why they have to like kind of promote littering. Like, look at this. It's like we got this beautiful beach, but we have to crap it up with cans and packs of cigarettes and more cans and a cactus. So I guess that's kind of like a grunge thing. I don't know what it is, but. A lot of the displays show a lot of litter, so I wonder if that's part of the culture or it's just some weird thing that they think is cool. So what I'm looking at is a very rare 1955 Lotus 10. There were only five of these made. It's an aluminum body, a little rough, but awesome looking. A little bit after 5 o'clock, closing in on the end of the day today, it's uh, Friday. I just stumbled across this 1960s Porsche diesel tractor. I guess it's called a Porsche diesel tractor junior. Never seen one of these before. Never even knew they made them. Got a little side chair over here. I love the way the suspension is controlled here. It looks like some sort of hydraulic dampener setup. Sitting at the Alpha Club taking a break, they were nice enough to let me sit down and even offered a Coke to me. The show has got a lot of hundreds of clubs probably that are here, and they all set up these really nice little 
booths uh, that you can kind of look at their club, learn about their club, and also they give you cookies and wine and cheeses and all sorts of nice things. It's really something else. I, I've never seen anything like it. The hospitality is superb. Okay, I'm entering a hall. I think I'm really going to like this kind of a lot of old used parts here. This, how long have you been here? Uh, we are in the tw 23rd year, 23rd? so yeah, we started in 1995 and had a small store around the corner, which was really a tiny, tiny little place that made it this spot and with the office in the back. And after eight years, we moved here, and so we're happy uh, to be here. And, uh, are there any other stores like this here? Yeah, I don't see many record stores oh, at all. There's, there's one store, but they mostly have like metal records. It's mm -hmm. called Yeah Records. All right. We have a lot of punk here. Yes, we have punk, we have a psychedelic, we have everything. So we have rock, of course, we have metal, all kinds. You came all the way to Germany. Oh, cool! And I like your jacket. I like like uh, Turbo Negro. Negro. Yes, I've seen like I Have don't. Have you know. seen many of their shows? Yeah, like seven or eight or <laughs> so. <laughs> wow. This is Mercedes display and for their service and parts for older cars. Do you speak English a little bit? Yes, a little bit. So what actual car is this that the parts are available for? They're showing that the parts are available for a particular... Mercedes is selling service parts for the older cars. Yes, the, this is the 300 SL Gullwing. This is the Gullwing. So Mercedes is making Gullwing parts now again? Yes. When did they start? We, we uh, produced these uh, red parts new, and you will get it, I think, in four weeks. The parts were, uh, are available. It's, it's amazing how many gold wings are here at the show. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of gold wings. I was surprised. Maybe because they can get new parts for them now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you so uh, much. Okay. Have a good time. Okay. All these car companies now have a classic center that specializes in classic car parts for the older cars. Mercedes has it, Porsche has it, Audi has it, Lamborghini has it. So that means this is a really good time to actually be in the business. If these big companies are again are getting involved with this, that means they're going where the money is. And when you think about it, some of these older cars are worth more than the newer cars now. So, so time to break out the old tooling and start making parts, huh? Those are your goal wings. Ninety-four euros. These little tiny ones aren't any better. This is about a hundred dollars just for this little car. If you want to get one of these little things, go right to this company. MiniAuto.net. They really love their slicing machines for the meats. Look at this beauty. I 
just looked in that car. It's actually got one of my JT5 five speeds. A lot of the companies, for some reason, don't want to put JT5. Cosworth sounds a lot more British and cool. There was a T5 actually made for the Cosworth Sierra transmission, but it's not a Cosworth transmission. It's a JT5, which was how I branded it was basically Jaguar T5. So that's where JT5 came from. Well, the show's over. Gonna head out tomorrow morning, but a few things I wanted to point out. Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting show. It was exciting to see some of these big companies get involved with restoration parts and get into that whole market again. Uh, that was very exciting to me. But I really didn't see many people going out and buying things at the show. A lot of people collecting literature, but nobody really spending any money. And there's two reasons for that. Either money's tight or the stuff is way overpriced. For example, guy made these great looking outfits with little leather trim and cotton, you know, mechanics overalls. And it'd be cool if you want to put on your mechanics overalls and work on your $80,000 Mercedes or whatever and look the part, but they're not practical. And I don't think you're gonna go sell them every day. You might sell one a month if you're lucky. So in that sense, there's a real passion for the workmanship and for the art of automotive, you know, for the mechanics, for making tools. There's a huge passion for that. Yeah. But at the same time, you're not going to sell anything. Lesson is, never fall in love with your product. You'll never sell it.